Across the wasteland that was once America, hope remains a commodity in short supply. Of all the nation-states that have risen since the Great War, most are brutal and cruel. They are based around the rule of the strongest, or a reverence for technology at the expense of humanity. Some resemble a bizarre parody of the civilization that came before, while others manipulate the symbols of the past to lend legitimacy to their own ambitions. Warlords and factions have laid claim to the ideals of the old United States, but few have embodied them and fewer still have had the strength to defend them. Yet far to the west, a new power is slowly rising, one that promises democracy, liberty, and the rule of law. For hundreds of thousands, every hope that the wasteland might one day be restored to greatness has been placed in the new California Republic. In keeping with its promise as a beacon of liberty, the nation has modeled itself on the pre-war United States and exists as a federal republic with fully functioning executive, legislative, and judicial branches. Supreme authority rests in the Republic Council, which is overseen by a directly elected president and vice president. The office of the president remains the single most powerful influence within the republic, and without any enforced term limits, an individual elected to this position can control the country for decades. Legislative power is held by the two houses of the NCR Congress, the House of Representatives and the Senate. While such labels evoke imagery of the distinguished and capable politicians of old, the Congress of the New California Republic is often a chaotic assembly of councillors, representatives, senators, and governors who each represent their home states and territories. While supposedly a united federation, in practice, each state works to assert its own independence and agenda. Friction often forms between rival states over matters of trade or caravan routes, which is often leveraged by outside groups in an attempt to exert political or economic influence across the entire republic. Brahmin cattle barons and trade monopolies like the Crimson Caravan use their immense wealth to affect elections, extort large amounts of money in the form of government contracts, or muscle out rival businesses with political support. Even the armed forces are not immune, reliant on weapon merchants and manufacturers like the gun runners to maintain their arsenal and who are granted special dispensation in return. The courts and judges of the judicial branch work to uphold an adapted version of the laws of the United States. But for now at least, the wasteland makes a mockery of any universal enforcement. Widespread corruption, nepotism, inefficiencies, and an overly bureaucratic state apparatus are the inherent disadvantages of the NCR's democratic system, and hopefully ones that the nation will someday rise above. In most areas, however, the state has been largely successful in eliminating prostitution, gambling, slavery, and the proliferation of weapons. In areas occupied by the NCR military and still operating under martial law, such crimes are often punishable by death. Citizens within the new California Republic live in a comparatively stable society. A series of capable women in positions of power has eliminated the rampant sexism found elsewhere in the wastelands, while ghouls and mutants are shown little discrimination and even serve proudly in the NCR military. A clear separation of church and state is also maintained, with every non-radical religion allowed within its borders, so long as they make no attempt to influence the political process, participate in human sacrifice, or expose their followers to the forced evolutionary virus. With a population of over 700,000 people, the New California Republic is most likely the largest nation within the wasteland. A majority of its citizens are farmers, traveling merchants, or refugees seeking protection from the dangers of the post-apocalyptic world, an uncommon luxury elsewhere. In exchange, citizens are required to pay taxes, and in this, the NCR is quite unique in that it uses its own form of currency rather than the caps traded elsewhere. 
Individuals or even entire communities can be granted citizenship if requested. Although as the NCR has expanded, this practice has grown increasingly controversial and there remain accusations that the nation has forcefully annexed weaker settlements and incorporated them against their will. In these frontier communities, there is a lingering feeling that their needs have been forgotten in favor of the more powerful regions further west, and many of these settlements have attempted to remain independent. As the power of the NCR has grown, it has made progressively stronger enemies, envious of its wealth and power. The defense of the nation is the responsibility of the new California Republic Army. It is a highly organized force by the standards of the wasteland, consisting of several divisions augmented by scouts, mechanized forces, and a small number of vertebrates. Its soldiers possess a remarkably standardized line of equipment and weapons, and NCR infantry in their tan uniforms, wide-brimmed hats, and goggles have quickly become the most famous symbol of the nation. Supplementing the NCR army is a police force typically found in the largest urban communities, as well as the new California Rangers. These rangers represent the elite of the NCR and have gained renown across the wasteland for their aptitude in conducting reconnaissance, as well as for their bravery and combat effectiveness. Rangers are known to operate safe houses far outside of NCR territory, striking against slavers for whom they have a particular hatred. Far before the Republic was capable of projecting power across the wasteland, it existed as a simple community born out of the survivors of Vault 15. Under the leadership of Eridesh and with the help of a stranger known only as the Vault Dweller, this settlement, Shady Sands, would prosper and form lucrative trade routes with numerous other communities. Gradually, a type of nationalist sentiment grew out of this collective of trade partners, and a trial council was formed to draft a national constitution. In 2189, just over a century after the Great War, the new California Republic was voted into existence as a sprawling federation of five states. Shady Sands, Maxson, Dayglow, The Hub, and Los Angeles. Eridesh was named the Republic's first president, and when he died after seven years of capable rule, his daughter Tandy was unanimously elected to take his place. The rise of the NCR brought it into conflict with the other major powers of the region, including the New Khans, the Enclave, and the Brotherhood of Steel. Another mythical figure in the wasteland known as the Chosen One would end the threat of the New Khans and the Enclave, but it would take a brutal war to vanquish the Brotherhood of Steel. The large manpower reserves of the NCR, combined with their intact manufacturing base, would prove to be the deciding factor both against the Brotherhood and the various raider factions rampant across the wasteland. Once legendary gangs like the Vipers and Jackals were hunted nearly to extinction and forced to flee east as the NCR continued to expand. When the NCR eventually tamed all of Southern California, President Tandy grew into an adored figure, both within the nation and without, frequently referred to as the Great Mother. Her death would gradually lead to a shift in the policies of the NCR. While the near unification of California had been a tremendous achievement, the nation's gold reserves had been destroyed during the war against the Brotherhood of Steel, and the nation was forced to embark on a more imperialistic method of expansion to secure additional resources. Critics say this rapid expansion has cost the Republic some of its moral standing and principles, but it has brought the nation within the reach of the great wealth of the Mojave. Under the leadership of President Aaron Kimball, the NCR has embarked on an aggressive campaign across this new region, establishing bases and even maintaining an embassy within the free economic zone of New Vegas. Across the Colorado River, however, lies Caesar's Legion, a slave army bound to the will of a single man. Both sides contend for control of New Vegas, the Hoover Dam, and the Mojave Wasteland itself. Contact with the West has always been fleeting, and in recent years, reports from the Mojave have been contradictory and confused. Some say the new California Republic won a great victory at the Hoover Dam, and the entire region has been brought under their dominion. Others claim that Caesar's Legion has enslaved New Vegas, and that President Kimball was either killed or disgraced. While both these and a thousand other tales can be heard across the wasteland, in one detail they all agree. 
a simple courier played some great part in the battle for the Mojave, which to this day remains unknown. It is said war, war never changes. But men and women do, through the roads they walk. And this road, for now at least, has reached its end. Want to join the Templin Institute? Pledge to us on Patreon to gain access to exclusive posts, updates, polls, and a bunch of cool rewards. Depending on your pledge tier, you can expect to receive Templin Institute patches, weekly custom wallpaper, parking passes, ID cards, and even a Templin Institute flag, among so much more. Most of all, however, you'll be directly supporting the Institute as we continue to investigate alternate worlds.